Hi folks, welcome to episode 9 of the series on making the jacket and drawing dies to make copper bullet jackets. We've got the 700 diameter punch in the four jaw chuck. This is the punch we use to cut the blanks. We're now going to drill and ream into to make the drawing die. I've got it in the four jaw and wrapped around it is a piece of three thou brass shim stock. That's to keep our punch surface finish nice and uh, clean with no jaw marks from the four jaw. I went ahead and dialed it in and it didn't take me long and I've got this dead on. As this reads out, there's at most, you know, two tenths. And again, I don't really think these are that accurate, but I'm comfortable that this is, this is as good as it's going to get dialed in with this four jaw. So we're going to first drill with a 31 64ths. That's I think 484. Yep, 484. And then we'll go in with a 499 reamer. And then after that, I've got a couple of new interesting ways that we can polish and finish the inside of this die. We want this to be mirrored finish. We want this to be smooth. We don't want the copper streaking or sticking. We'll start with our center drill. We'll run her about, let's see here, 415, which is S1. And start the machine. Here's our 31 64ths. <clears throat> Someone made the great comment that if you're dealing with a material like this that doesn't form string chips and thus exit drills well, I think brass would be another example. Pick up a parabolic drill. The uh, steeper flute pitch will be great. Same feed rate and we are good to go. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up off camera. We'll be right back. Drilling complete. Now, we drilled again with a 484 drill bit or, or 31 64ths. Drill bits don't drill good holes. They're, they're usually not round and they're usually not accurate. Even in a rigid setup like this lathe, that's okay. That's what drill bits are really meant to do. And that's why we ream or bore or do some other finishing operation. Nevertheless, let's grab our pin gauges here and let's pick out a few. Let's do 484, 488, and 490. And let's walk over to the lathe and see what we get. This is a great example where it's a lot quicker and it can be equally, if not more accurate, than using snap gauges in a micrometer. So 484, I bet, will slip in no problem. Yep, and you can feel there's some play. So 488, ooh, that's pretty good. 
So the first quarter inch or five sixteenths, pretty good fit. 490. Mm. Fits in, you know, for a little less than an eighth of an inch. So that's what, you know, so we've obviously got some taper from the, the drill. That's not surprising given how, given how much we had to peck it. And so what this tells me is the whole, you know, the front part of the hole is something between 480 and 490. Let's grab our 499 reamer, run the reamer through it, and then see where we are. Let's chuck it up. Okay, we are going to slow it down to R3, which is only 245. Let's get some cutting fluid on there. And so I care the most about the first, you know, half inch of this hole. If you remember from the CAD model, my plan is to step out the diameter after a certain point so that the black the jackets are just floating inside the tube rather than being inside of a compressed die. So I think what I'm going to do is only ream this to uh, to about where the chuck jaws are. My concern is that if I keep reaming in and out you'll end up widening the hole a little bit. I can flip it around and, and bore it out to get to the larger OD which is not nearly as critical a dimension. So let's, uh, let's ream away. Okay, looks good so far. Let's go grab uh, some few pin gauges and see if we're at 499 or 5. Okay, here's the 499. This should fit. It does. Perfect. Uh, you can see no real play there, uh, but it might be loose. Let's see if the 5 fits. <laughs> the 5 does not. Awesome. So that's how you use pin gauges. We know now that this. ID is somewhere between 499 and 5. So that's pretty good, pretty darn good. Now the question is surface finish. Here's a look at the surface finish. You know, typical surface finish for a reamer and a reamed hole, uh, but we're going to want to do a lot better than that. And the reason is the smoother a finish, the better our jacket cups are going to look. They'll be less streaking and they will stick less, all, um, all of which is very important. So we want to polish this up as best we can. The, uh, you know, I only had a 499 reamer, so we were stuck with that as a starting point. I'm going to use a flex hone, which I'll show you here in a second, and then perhaps uh, a way of sanding IDs. So we may end up going over 500. I would rather have a better surface finish and, and then worry less about the ID, but we do at least want to know where we are. I don't have pin gauge sets. Uh, above 500, so we'll use our snap gauges to see if we end up taking a few, two, you know, one or two thou over 500. But again, let's try to see what we can get for a uh, mirror finish here. Here is our flex hone. I've seen these used before, never used one myself. Uh, doesn't look too complicated, although I'm sure there is a finesse to it. We'll want to use some a lubricant, so we're going to use some 30 weight motor oil. And then the directions say to make sure you've got the Tool rotating upon entry and removal from the hole, and recommended RPM ranges, you know, 500 to 1200. 
and clean cylinder after with warm water and a detergent and then oil the cylinder I think that's it so let's give this a shot let's put some oil in the hole and then I'll put some on the hone as well Okay, let's fire up and see how it feels. Let's see, uh, see what that looks like. Oh wow, that's nice. You can see, you can definitely see the difference and I, it's a little too small for me to really get my pinky in there, but what little I can, I can feel a difference. If any of you uh, watching have experience with these, I'd be curious to know how much residue or grit these leave behind. My concern being I don't really want to blow this stuff into my spindle bearings or on, even on the lathe bed. So I'll do a little, as little of that as I can here. Let's see where our whole mic's out at. Two tenths over, over half inch. So let's run this in a few more times and then we're gonna try some sandpaper, high grit sandpaper and see what that does. Feels actually incredible. That's one of the best uh, ID service finishes I've ever felt. That's really promising, actually. You know, thinking about it, I really, really am happy with that finish. That's incredible. So let's do this. I don't think I want to do any more uh, honing or sanding in the chuck. The geometry of the inside edge of this die is very important. It's the first area where the recently formed copper blank will meet between the punch and the die, and that's what will start folding the material over the punch. I don't know what's the best, whether it's a chamfer or a fillet. So I'm going to do a fillet. I will start small, I can always make it bigger. The best way I've got right now to put a chamfer on an ID is to flip my boring bar holder around and use an insert tool bo tooling boring bar, and I've got the compound set at 45 and will just move the carriage over and make a pass, a small pass, and then move the carriage over a little more and so forth. Okay, that's all we're gonna do. I can always do more later. I wasn't happy with the surface finish running the barring bore through like that. So what I did was I spun the, spun the lathe backward and I came in here and just very gently kissed off the ridges that were formed from, from uh, moving the tool across the angle 
with a single pass like this. You gotta be careful, you can get chatter if you do this the wrong way. And that was perfect. There is a small ridge halfway up the chamfer, but I don't know if it's more almost more cosmetic than an actual physical ridge. I can't really feel it, um, and I can't really seem to get rid of it. I don't wanna take more chamfer out right now. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. I, th I think we might be okay. So let's go take a look and see how this works. Actually, one last step. I endoed our part we need to drill out the other side for some clearance. Because remember, we only reamed halfway into it. So right now, this side here is, is uh, like 489 or whatever we said. So I've got a 33 64ths. I'm only gonna run it in about one inch. That will get us to where we matched our reamed diameter and if I need to take more out later to let the cups float up, I can. I think this will do it for now. Perfect. Back at the bench now, I have to say, I really like this little part. It turned out great. I did throw some polish on the inside just after the last drilling operation, and it really did pop. It's hard to see in the camera here, but if I take a, a Q-tip, hopefully you can see the mirror inside the part there. So hard to argue with that. It's got a step inside it, as you can see as well. So my hope is we can use this to form a cup. The one thing I haven't figured out is how this is actually going to work. In other words, I have no problem using a hydraulic press, whether using my little shop press or a hand press or powered hydraulic press, no problem going down. I do need to figure out how I'm gonna pull it back up. And there is going to be a lot of pressure pulling it back up because the couple have been formed over this die and the punch inside the blanking die cavity here. But for now, let's hop over, let's put a piece of copper in there and let's punch it and cup it in the same and we can just take the top off to get it out. All right, folks, here it is. This is the real moment. I've got a strip of copper. I've thrown some swage lube on it so it's not dry. It does have a little bit of lube on it. And slide it in there. I want to throw a spacer on here. The uh, This little Harbor Freight shot press has a bent piston and I don't want that to ding up my punch, so this will help. Okay folks, no teaser this time, we're going for it. Should be able to keep going until it bottoms out. There it did. Okay. Here we are. Now this was stuck a little harder than I thought inside the die, something like so. So all I did to get it out was I drilled a quarter inch hole in the top of the die. That let me stick a dowel pin through the top. And then with the dowel pin down there, I had a way to twist these without marring up the surface finish. One reason it was stuck so bad is I didn't drill the thicker counter bore deep enough, that last drilling operation we did with the drill slightly over half an inch. So what happened was when the die bottomed out on the punch, I hadn't yet reached the counter bore where it would become more loose and actually may strip itself off if when I back it out. So I'll take care of that. More importantly, the cup looks awesome. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's really nice looking. And if you compare it with the last version I made with the aluminum dies, it had a lot of streaking from the aluminum and just, it wasn't bad, wasn't quite as nice. 
So that's a wrap for this series. I am going to make the drawing dies to bring this down to the 352 or so we need for a proper nine millimeter jacket case. If you guys wanna see the video series on that, comment below, let me know. But we're gonna call this series a wrap. Again, really happy with it. A couple of final notes, you know, remember we didn't just do a cupping operation here. We actually did draw out the material such that it was originally about 30 thou thick. When you measure the sidewall, you'll see it's somewhere between 21 and 22 thousandths thick, which is great. And we'll grab our calipers here. And I think this is so cool. When you put a set of calipers on the cup that we formed, it is so close to 500 even. I think I measure about 3 tenths over on the vernier. I think that's really awesome. Anyways, really appreciate the enthusiasm, guys. Didn't expect you to want to see this level of detail. Hopefully it's informative. I've got a lot left to learn on making jackets, but I love it. I really love machining, and I really love making these videos and sharing it with you guys. I get a lot out of it, too. Some of the feedback and comments have been super helpful, so, so thanks. One of the things I just saw was a comment from someone on a book talking about better ways to strip the recently formed cups off the punch. I'm going to look into that. That's all for now, though, folks. I am pushing our Facebook page. It's a way for me to easily share pictures and behind the scenes and just snapshots of what we're go what's going on in the shop. So if you're interested, by all means, please check out the Facebook page. Otherwise, that's all for now, folks. Take care.